This is everything you want, right? Seven o'clock tonight, Eastern time. I am going to be dialed in on this one. This is, these are the two. Listen, take DeGrom out of it. Two best in the business, right? Doing it this year. I mean, Max Scherzer's got his arguments, a few other guys. But we haven't seen this yet. And I am here for it. And I want to dive in, and I want to do it from a couple different angles. I want to take in to why I think the Yankees potentially have a puncher's chance tonight against Shane Bieber because of some of the things he's done, why he's taking a step forward, how he potentially is going to attack them. And then I want to take a look at Garrett Cole and how he's been in the Yankees uniform and what it means to have Higashioka behind the dish for him tonight and why he's able to has pitched a lot better with him as his battery mate. So let's first, let, can we please, Shane Bieber, Mark, bring it up. This is a season comparison, okay? Last, these are the last 12 starts. Garrett Cole's statistics in his final 12 starts. And I just want to give Garrett Cole some justice of how great he was with the Houston Astros before he signed that monster contract. Because all we've done in this truncated season is talk about how efficient, how dominant, potential AL MVP votes for Shane Bieber. He's put Cleveland Indians on his back, okay? Garrett Cole was doing the same thing, if not a smidge better. Final 12 starts for the Houston Astros. So I wanna first focus on Shane Bieber, how he's gonna go about it. Because listen, let's dive into a little bit of B-roll. He was unbelievable this year, but there's been a reason why. He's kind of adjusted his repertoire. His K percentage has gone through the roof to the tune of 41%. Last year, his K percentage was 30.2. So he's got to be doing something a little bit different. His swinging strike percentage is 17% when it used to be 14%. So let's dive into the pitch arsenals because he's done two things. He's committed to two things in 2020 that we're going to get into, okay? First, right-handed hitters. This pitch has completely come into vogue. This is an absolute new pitch for him, okay? He's a guy that normally would throw slider curveball. Stay with me here. His slider sat at about 85 miles an hour. His curveball sat at about 84 miles an hour. So he's showing you two different variations, but they're in the same speed, especially to the right-handed hitters. You got the four-seam heater, and then you're starting to see a wrinkle, but they're kind of morphing into one. So what happens? He comes up with a cutter this year for right-handed hitters. We'll get into that. And what else changed? Steady diet of curveballs to the left-handed hitters. He's got the ability to render any left-handed hitter in the game pretty much useless. Take a look at this. Left-handed hitters this year. Three for 53, no extra base hits, and 36 punch outs. So let's dive into some B-roll on how he's used these two pitches to kind of get you off other things. Here he is against Jonathan Scope. He thinks that's a heater middle away. Cameron Maben, front hips gone, whoop, they're out. Josh Donaldson thinks he's got that covered. He thinks that pitch is black away. Same thing with Jorge Soler. It's just a little tweaky cutter to get you off slider curveball and four seamer that he has adjusted and given him another weapon against right-handers, the curveball. He could pretty much tell the lefties it's coming. Christian Yelich, that thing almost bounced in the grass, and it's wipeout central. Nobody hit this pitch the entire season. Like we said, three for uh, 53 with no extra base hits. But I do believe that the Yankees present a problem, okay? Because we can dive in right now. Take a look at it. These are his splits. The Yankees are very right-handed, all right? So home runs allowed six to one. Right-handed to left-handed hitters. And what do you got in the Yankees lineup? I could show you Judge. I could show you Stanton. I could show you Sanchez going bridge. The bottom line, this team's been carried offensively by the Honky Tonk Man and DJ LeMayhew. <laughs> Period, the end. But sliders from Shane Bieber, there's a chance it's a short porch in Cleveland as well as New York at Yankee Stadium. DJ LeMayhew fears nobody, and you know this oily bohunk's gonna have his <laughs> fourth button tonight. Chest hair popping out, he's going for it, Roflo. This is his moment. He led the league in homers, 22. And if Shane Bieber misses and hangs something, cutters, slider, whatever the case may be, 
a right-handed laden lineup might be able to jump him, bloop in a Did blast. You say he's an oily bohunk? He is an oily bohunk. <laughs> I love every bit of it. Okay, so that's Bieber. So watch out for that tonight. You're gonna see that little cutter. You're gonna see four seams, some breaking stuff. Yankees pose a problem for him, though. They're not a left-handed laden lineup. The Aaron Hickses of the world, the Brett Gardner's of the world, I don't expect them to do much damage in this game if Brett's in the lineup. Flip it now. Let's focus on Garrett Cole, okay? Because the Yankees brought him over to win every game that he goes about it. So I want to dive in. He kind of got off, and he never said a bad word. Pause this real quick. He never said a bad word about Gary Sanchez. He actually lauded his work ethic and his craft and putting the time into becoming a defensive catcher. I think that affected his offense. But let's bring up the one board. Once Kyle Higashioka went in to the starting rotation and kind of became his personal catcher. Because the proof's in the pudding. Can we bring that up real quick? Take a look at this. Splits by catcher. You got Gary Sanchez. Eight starts with Sanchez. Four starts with Higashioka. And Anthony Kastrovins talked about this right at the top of the show. The numbers don't lie. He's got a one Gives up no homers. His strikeout percentage is a little up. His hard hit percentage is way down. Opponent OPS is 300 points down. But why is that? Why is he working better with Higashioka as opposed to Gary Sanchez? It has nothing to do with him going down to the knee, Gary Sanchez going down to his knee. It has to do with catching high strikes. Garrett Cole is a guy who likes to bully you with the high heater. High heater, curveball, slider, get you up here, upstairs. And Kyle Higashioka has been dominant getting that call. You cannot deny this. Look at this. Bang. That's a ball. Ha. Pulling that back right there against Teoscar Hernandez. Randall Grichik trying to duck it right there. How about Candelito right there? He thinks he's walking. Nope, nope. Let's readjust it. So take a look. Highest percentage of four-seam fastballs elevated since the start of 2019. These are the guys that use it to their advantage. And there he sits. 58.1%. That is his MO. He wants to throw high gas past you, get you looking up there. He could dominate you up there, bully you up there, then wrinkle something off that. And Gary Sanchez was not stealing him any strikes up there. Kyle Higashioka has done that. So this is a matchup. We can dive in. I just want to take you a couple low homes, little low homes real quick, because I love this. If you're in the box tonight, He's middle of the rubber right there. He's not trying to trick you at all. This is mono e mono. This is big time stuff, and he can hit every quadrant that you want. So I cannot wait to see a hot Jose Ramirez, who has really, really put his name in the AL MVP conversation down the stretch, have to stare Garrett Cole down right here. Run this. You can't come off the heater. For me, both these guys, you can't come off the heater. Lock me in on Bieber, too. He has streamlined his mechanics so well this year, and he's on the first base side of the rubber, which for me, again, presents another advantage for a right-handed hitting lineup. It gives you that one nanosecond more. If he was standing on the third base side of the rubber, it almost seemed like he was throwing behind you, and that slider-breaking ball combination would get really, really tough to see right out of his hands. But him being on the first base side might just give Honky Tonk Man, might just give DJ LeMayhu a chance. This is an epic battle that I cannot wait. Roflo, serious. I love it. 